The following episode of Charlotte Cooks is brought to you by Central Piedmont Community College and viewers like you. Thank you. edition of Charlotte Cooks. I'm Chef Pamela Roberts and today we are going to be grilling up a flank steak, making chimichurri sauce from some fresh herbs and serving that up just ever so deliciously. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about flank steak first. What's a flank steak? A flank steak is a cut of meat and obviously it's a cut of meat. It comes from the bottom plate of the cow. It comes pretty much directly below where the short loin is, but it, it's in an area of the cow that gets a really pretty good area of exercise, so it's not going to be a tender piece of meat. This is a flank steak. Now, this looks a little on the brown side because I've had it marinating overnight. I marinated it in Worcestershire sauce overnight just to add some flavor. But you can see the flank steak has a taper. It's kind of thickish on one side and then it narrows down. It looks like a great big flat tongue if you ask me. When you buy a flank steak you want to look and make sure that there's not this giant fat cap sticking over most of the meat. You'll have a little bit of fat here and a little bit of fat here and that's good. You want some fat because fat adds flavor and moisture. Without any fat on it whatsoever you're going to have a dried out piece of meat and it's going to be like eating shoestrings, okay? So what we're going to do is, well also I want to show you since this is going to be really really evident right now, you can see the grain of the meat. The meat runs in this long grain like this. And now, this cut of meat, I'm going to use this for just the sliced flank steak right now, but we're going to be using it with a chimichurri sauce. You can find this piece of meat in the store. Sometimes they'll sell it as flank steak. Sometimes they'll sell it as London broil. In Chinese stores, you'll find it as stir fry beef. It goes by several different names, but if you ask the butcher for a nice piece of flank steak, you can certainly get a nice piece of flank steak. And tell them you want the fat cap off if you're going to a butcher. Now, what we're going to do with this is we're going to season this up. We're going to season this up with a little bit of your favorite steak seasoning. And as I mentioned, I had already marinated this in a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. I'm going to flip it over, do it on both sides. All right. Now we're going to put it on the grill. You're going to get your grill good and hot. And when you put this meat on the grill, you're going to want to, you want to get, just because it's a big old piece of meat and you're going to put it out and you're going to carve it, you want to get those crosshatch marks on it. So you're going to take this hunk of meat. Look at this. All right. See this hunk of meat? See this? You remember when Lady Gaga did her meat dress? This was what she made her meat dress out of. I don't know how in the world she wore it because this weighs a lot. <laughs> I'm surprised she made this out of meat dress out of flank steak. Anyway. You're going to put this on at an angle. Let's say a round clock face. We're going to put this on. So it basically faces about 11 o'clock. We're going to let this sit in that position for about four minutes. Stop flaring up. If your grill flares up like this, guys, you can throw water on it. I'm not going to throw water on this grill because this is an electric grill. but. You don't want that flame to be underneath your meat, so as long as it's off to the edge, you're going to be fine. Let me wash my hands, clean up my cutting board, and then I'm going to come back and flip this to the other side so that then we can have our nice grill marks. All right, well, you got all this smoke going on here. I hope you can see me. All right, the next thing we're going to do after this has browned in one way, we're going to pick it up and we're going to turn it so it faces 2 o'clock. All right? Now, when you put your meat down on the grill, don't go moving it around. Don't go picking it up and looking to see if it's like got marks on it because when it lays back down, those marks are going to change. You're going to get another mark on it. You're not going to have such nice clear marks on there. So now I'm just going to turn this over and let it face about 1 to 2 o'clock for another 4 minutes and let that grill for a little bit longer. All right, I'm going to turn this over. Now, if you're grilling outside, see, now this is what you want on here. You want to see those diamond hash marks. You know, sometimes you're not going to get it across the surface, but you know, that's the glory of grilling. Can you see me? <laughs> that's the glory of grilling, okay? 
So you can also do this on both sides. You don't have to do it on both sides. If you just wanted to throw it on your grill and not worry about the hash marks, that's totally okay too. But grilling adds such a nice flavor to this meat. This meat is a cut that you can use. You can um, braise it to make it even more tender, but you gotta remember, it is a tough cut of meat. So if you're gonna be using it, you gotta cut it thin. And we'll talk about how we cut it after it's finished cooking. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put it in a pan and I'm gonna finish this in the oven. I've got a 350 degree oven going um, just so we can move on and not be smoked out for the rest of the show, okay? So, if you wanted to finish cooking this on the grill, by all means, please do. And the other way I would do this was once again, once I flipped it, I would mark it on either side and then just let it grill until it was the desired temperature you want. I'm gonna try to cook this till about medium rare today. So now it's in the oven, 350 degrees, and it probably will take maybe Oh, maybe, probably about maybe 10 minutes. Okay, so now we're gonna work on the sauce. And for our sauce today, we're gonna make a classic South American sauce called chimichurri sauce. And the reason I love chimichurri sauce is because it is just chock full of wonderful good things for you, like parsley. Now, if you're choosing your parsley to use, I'm just gonna haul these things over here right now and talk about them. I'm gonna be using some fresh cilantro. Doesn't that look nice and fluffy and nice? I'm going to be using, I said parsley. Where's the parsley? Right here. And the parsley that I'm choosing for this is a flat leaf parsley. Why am I choosing flat leaf parsley? Because I like flat leaves better than the curly leaf parsley. No other reason. If you had curly leaf parsley, you could certainly use it. So what are we going to do with our ratios for this? Equal parts, cilantro and parsley. I'm going to move this over here for right now. And I'm going to put this into a food processor, OK? If you didn't have a food processor, you could use a blender. Um, you could chop it all up by hand, which is a tedious amount of work. If you had one of those little chopper j -j -j things, those little bitty ones, you could certainly use that. But you only make a little bit of sauce. And this sauce is so delicious that you're going to want a lot of it. OK, so what we're going to do is taking our food processor, we're going to take about a cup and a half of our parsley and taking it out of my water here. And I like to store my, my herbs in a glass of water. Um, and I, I put the glass of water directly in the refrigerator. And, and these things will stay fresh for a very long time, which is really kind of nice. All right, I'm taking the ends of the parsley and I'm going to break them off. OK, can we use that? If you made stalks, if you made some things that call for parsley stems, Save them. If not, you don't have to save them. Just drop them into your food processor. So far, y'all can do this. I'm going to get rid of this here. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take about the same amount of cilantro. Did you guys know that cilantro was one of the only herbs that goes by two names? Cilantro is basically the Spanish name for coriander. And we usually, in English, we call the fresh herb, cilantro, and then when we're using the dried herb as the spice or the seeds that have been ground up, we usually refer to that as coriander. But it's the same plant. It's just this plant has gone to seed. So about the same amount of cilantro and parsley. And you can see I'm measuring really accurate, right? I'm using my hands, so you can do that too. It's not very hard to do. So I'm going to stuff that down in there. And once again, I got a handful of stalks. Um, I'm just going to throw those stalks away. I'm going to put this stuff off to the side because I'll save that for the next time I want to make chimichurri sauce. And I'm going to add a little bit of fresh oregano. Fresh oregano is really, really a pretty herb. It grows in these long stalks. It has these big spaces between the, the, um, the leaf patterns. And what you want to do is just, it just clip off each of these little sections here, OK? Just pinch them off with your fingers. And guys, if you don't grow herbs at home um, and you go to the store and you buy them, go off to a store and buy yourself a couple of plants, oregano, parsley. Um, these things will come back year after year after year. And it may die back to the ground, but it does come back. And these have just come back this, this spring. And they're just really, they grow really quick and they're really pretty. How much of the oregano are we going to add? If you were measuring, it would be a cup and a half of parsley to a cup and a half of cilantro to a half a cup of oregano, OK? If you're just pinching and, and measuring with your hands like I am, until you get tired of picking the oregano off the stalk, OK? So I'm tired of doing that now. I'm going to throw these away. All right, so the next thing I'm going to add to this is a clove of garlic. 
Now when you get your cloves of garlic, you want to make sure when you break them apart, if there's any kind of little tough ends on the ends, you want to make sure you take those and clip those off. So take a little knife, because those, those little ends, even though you're putting it into a food processor, sometimes they, they still come off to be a little on the woody side, and nobody likes to take a little piece of garlic and get it stuck and go, well, that's just an awful taste of, of garlic. So one clove, two cloves, I like garlic, so I'm going to put two cloves in. I'm also going to add the juice of one to two lemons, once again, depending on your choice. So put your lemon juice right in the top there. Just pour it in. Now, another thing we're going to add is a little bit of red wine vinegar, just to add a little bit of moisture and a little bit of tang, like the lemon juice doesn't provide enough tang. It just adds another kind of tang. I'm also going to use a little bit of olive oil, okay? And olive oil is going to bring all of this together. And then, a little bit of salt. And I like to use kosher salt. Just don't use the salt that has iodine in it. Why not? Because iodine is bitter. Iodine has been added to our salt to help prevent some scurvy and some other kinds of diseases that were common a long time ago. But you don't want to have it into your cooking food because iodine is bitter. So if you're going to use iodized salt, save it for your table salt. You're going to stick the lid on your food processor and you're going to turn it on and let it process. Hold your hand over it at first because it splashes. And then we're going to let it go. It's splashing all over me. You want to take a spatula and you're going to want to push this down a little bit, okay? And you're going to want to let this process until it's pretty fine, okay? So I'm going to put the lid back on there and once again, it's going to process for a couple of minutes. You will have to punch it down a little bit, scrape your bowl down a little bit each time because it does get thrown up along the sides of the food processor, but you know what, that's okay, okay, okay. Just make sure you're aware of that and process it down. So once it's as fine as you like it to be, we're going to pour it into a bowl. We're going to give it a taste and make sure it's just the way you like it. You can see now that oil that's coming on the top used to be all plain and like white oil. Now it's all green from all the chlorophyll and the parsley and the herbs combining. This is good. Did you guys know that parsley's got a natural iron in it? It's just a one, oh yeah. Okay, I say that's ready. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna give this a little taste. I think, let's see how I like that. Mm-hmm, yep, that, that's, yeah, that's good. That's, that's good. That's all I'm gonna say, that's good. All right, pick up your food processor. Now, folks, here's a little trick. When you're using a food processor, take your finger, put it up in the hole that's underneath here so that when you pour your stuff out, the blade doesn't come, come plunking out onto the table. Okay, so we're just gonna pour this out. Make sure you get all of that lovely goodness. Isn't that a beautiful color green? That's one of my favorite colors of green. I guess you'd call that Kelly green, parsley green, chimichurri green, what would you call it? Okay, so now, there we go. We're gonna get all this in the bowl. And that's all it is to make chimichurri sauce. When you have chimichurri sauce, the taste is wonderful, complex, especially with the grilled meat. Gosh, it's just so delicious. And so we're gonna set this aside until we're ready to serve it. Now, the next thing we're gonna do, while our grill is still a little warm, we're gonna take some of our tortillas. and so we're gonna give them a little bit of an oil brush. We're just gonna take a brush, just sim simple vegetable oil, Brush them on both sides so that when you put them on the grill, they're not going to necessarily burn on you, okay? And I'm just putting these on a low grill and I'm just gonna warm them up. Now here, you can see in this tortilla, yeah, I got a couple of different kinds. I got a white corn tortilla and I've got a green chili tortilla. And that green chili tortilla is gonna give you a nice little kick. Guess what the green chili is? It's probably jalapeno. All right, I'm gonna let that go for a little bit. And we'd, all we're trying to do here, we're not trying to cook these tortillas. We're not trying to do anything else with these things other than just make them warm. 
So, while our tortillas are warming, yeah, I got the grill on nice and low, so that should take a nice few minutes. Yeah, I'm nice and low. I'm going to take the steak out of the oven, the flank steak out of the oven now, and I'm going to show you how we slice this, okay? I'm going to take the flank steak out of the oven. And, ah, uh, ooh, look at that. It's all done now. Oh, it's all nice and steamy. Look at that. Mm. Now, folks, I don't know if I should tell you this or not, but whenever you use towels to get things out of the oven, I rarely use oven mitts. I'm, in fact, I don't even own an oven mitt. I usually use nice kitchen towels folded up to grab stuff, hot things with. Make sure that towel isn't hot, I mean, isn't wet, because if that towel is wet and you touch something that's been in a hot oven, it turns to steam and goes through and that steam will burn you. You don't want to do that. Okay, so our steak is done and oh, look at this. Mm, yum, 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 yum. It's lighter on one side than it is on the other. And I'm going to show you this side first because here I can really show you where the grain is. Let me get rid, no, I might not get rid of that pan just yet. Okay, so if you look at this piece of meat, you can see the long ends of this fibrous, so the, where the fiber, muscle fibers run. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this over, and I'm going to use a nice long sharp knife, and we're going to cut across this grain, because cutting across the grain is going to make that meat tender. Now remember, this comes from a part of the cow that is going to be tough. So I'm going to take a nice sharp knife and I'm going to cut small long pieces from this thing. Now you're going to have to remember that the edges are going to be a little bit more well done than the very center and as we come back to this unit you can see right here this is where the thickest part of the meat is so this is where your rarest part is going to be. But cut it all nice and thin and that way when we plate it up and we cover it with our chimichurri sauce you're just going to have something that's just totally irresistible. Okay, so this one was left in the oven, so it's, it's pretty well done. It's, it's not medium rare or anything like that. It depends on how you want it cooked. I kind of like, you know, nowadays, I've gone past the point where I'm like, ooh, I could eat a cow raw, to where, you know, I like it medium. I really do. Some people prefer to have it a little less done. And I'm trying to cut this into some rarer parts so you could see how when you cut into the thicker part of this, it gets a little bit more rare, gets a little bit more of the pinkish on there. And you can see there's lots of fluid and juice coming out of here. It's just so yummy. I wish you could smell this because this really smells good. Come on into the studio sometime. Let's smell what's going on. Can we invent smell-o-vision yet? I'm waiting for that. It'll happen. <laughs> It'll happen. They can do so many things nowadays. So you can see how when you slice this, you can get, as you get to the thicker part, it's going to be a little bit more rare than the others. So now I'm going to get my plate and I'm going to plate up, okay? On my plate, I've added a few things. I've got a couple of my tortillas that have been grilled. I've got a nice little salad here. A little pieces, a couple pieces of star fruit just to have a nice little palate cleanser. I'm also taking, thanks for the reminder of the lime on the, on the um, plate, a little bit of lime juice. And you're going to squeeze this all over this meat. You can do this as it comes off the grill, but I really like doing this as we are finished cutting it because it makes it nice and fresh. I'm going to add a little more. Sometimes your limes might be a little on the dry side, and if that happens, then, you know, here's a couple things you can do. Take a knife and come in here and chop this up, just like this. And what that does is it pops all those little citrus bubbles inside, and it makes it less hard to squeeze, and it gets all the juice out. Some people say putting it in the microwave. Um, honestly, I try to avoid using a microwave for anything. Um, so. Don't use a microwave. You can put it in a thing of hot water, warm it up. See how that juice comes out now? Once you do that, and just squeeze it all over the meat. Ugh. Yummy, yummy. I can't wait to eat this. All right. Dry your hands off. Grab your tongs. Take your tortillas and flip them. Make sure they're not burning. Since I've already got them on the plate, these are going to go on the side. 
All right, we're gonna take our plate, and on my plate I've got a little bit of salad. I wanna line up some meat here on the plate. And the nice thing about this meat is that, you know, it's long and you can curve it, you can bend it, or you can just lay it down there if you like. And I also have a couple of grilled plantains. Plantains are those green bananas that you find in the uh, store. They're really kind of hard. They're also called horse bananas. Um, they're kind of hard. Um, you have to cook them. You can't eat them raw like you can fresh bananas. But what I did with these is I put them on the grill. And I was going to talk about doing that today, grilling them. But you also have to take them and saute them and fry them because they are very dry. OK, so you've got to give them some kind of moisture and stuff to go on with this. Oh, I'm going to eat this. Yum. OK, little garnish. What are these? Anybody know? These are chive flowers. Pardon me while I eat. Chive flowers. These things will come out of your chive plants. They come out of onion plants and they come out of garlic plants too. You can eat these. They're really kind of wonderful because all you have to do, if you look at them very, very closely, let me use this knife here to point this out because I don't have a sharp fingernail here to show you. See all these little things in here? Look at this, all these little individual flowers. All of these individual flowers taste like chives. They're beautiful in color, so you just pull them off, okay? And you end up with this lovely, look at that. They're, they're gorgeous. They're absolutely beautiful little flowers. And you can take them, you can eat them. And they taste just like onions. They taste like garlic, whatever plant they're coming off of. These came off the chive plant. Now you have a garlic chive plant that puts out a white flower, which is nice. These are the onion chives. So I like to sprinkle this around just because it's, I like purple. Gee, imagine that. I like green, imagine that. I need a spoon. Where's my spoons? Here they are. I'm gonna put this on our meat. Take your chimichurri sauce and drizzle that over your meat. And then sit down and eat this stuff. Oh my gosh, is it ever, 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 ever good. So folks, let me get these tortillas off of here before this burns up. Throw these over here, got nice warm tortillas. I'll line these up. Nice, toasty, warm tortillas. I'm gonna put the rest of our meat on here too. That plate's not hot. I'm going to put the rest of our meat on here, just so we can see what it all looks like. Ah, ah, dragging it all over the place here. There we go. Lay this down. Straighten that out. Put that on there. And get some of these nice, well-done pieces on here, too. And I'm going to take this, and I'm going to put some more chimichurri sauce on here. And I could put this platter on the table, and people can help themselves. <laughs> Someone could take this whole plate and say, oh, that's mine. There you go. Now, when you serve this, you want to make sure that you always add some lime, because lime is just delicious. Just delicious, that's all. It's just delicious. So there you go. Here's our plate with our grilled flank steak. We have some plantains on there that are just, you know, a nice little kind of sweet addition. We have some tortillas to wrap that flank steak up with. We've got a lime on there to squeeze over everything. Got a little bit of star fruit on there because that just adds a nice little fruity flavor. Do you have to have star fruit? No, it's just one that I thought would be an attractive fruit to put on there. And a little bit of salad greens. You could put guacamole on this plate. You could put some salsa on this plate. Anything you want to, but there it is. Grilled flank steak with chimichurri sauce and some warm tortillas. So I hope you enjoy this. Try it at home. Uh, if you don't have a grill, there's no reason you can't cook that flank steak in a saute pan and throw it in the oven and finish it that way too. So thank you for watching this edition of Charlotte Cooks. I'm Chef Pamela Roberts and I'm so glad you joined me here today. If you'd like to email me, my email address is Pamela, P-A-M-E-L-A, dot roberts r-o-b-e-r-t-s at cpcc.edu and you can find our recipes on our website at pbscharlotte.org so look forward to seeing you next time and let me know what you think of these dishes thank you very much and we'll see you real soon bye bye now mm -hmm.